evening, Dr. Dulani. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm wondering whether the president's swift and decisive action on corruption has drawn him praise in the country. Well, I actually wouldn't call it swift because the stories about corruption in the current administration, they've been going about for, for a while now. Uh, and I think the president has been forced to take the decision he has because recently a uh, quasi-religious political, I mean, quasi-religious civil society grouping called the Public Affairs Committee met him and gave him an ultimatum to reshuffle, uh, to, to dissolve his cabinet and uh, take a firm hold on the scourge of corruption uh, that seems to be taking hold under his administration, despite the fact that he did indeed, as you rightly note, fight the last campaign on the pledge to end corruption and impunity. I see that some of the allegations relate to one minister accused of diverting COVID-19 funds. We've seen similar corruption scandals here in South Africa. Uh, why do you think he's taken the move to remove his entire cabinet at this point? You mentioned the, the meeting uh, with the church groups and the pressure that was building, but it's still an extraordinary move, isn't it? It is indeed extraordinary, especially considering that he, he, has, he, uh, he has proven over the last couple of months uh, to, you know, not to listen to uh, outside pressure to uh, dissolve his cabinet. But I think there have been a series of events. Apart from this meeting that he took place uh, last week, there was also a leaked uh, audio uh, message that he, where the director of the Anti-Corruption Bureau uh, was recorded uh, complaining that she's not getting much support from the administration and that there are quite a lot of corrupt uh, individuals in the current administration. So Chakwiradire was pushed to a corner where he either had to side with the director of the Anti-Corruption Bureau uh, or uh, sack her because uh, you know, there were some concerns that some of the information that the director of the Anti-Corruption Bureau uh, diverged where uh, uh, privileged information. But she is quite a very popular uh, individual. Uh, she's really seen as, as a big fighter against corruption. Uh, and I think this also forced Chakwira really to make this decision. It was either he sided with her or he acted on his cabinet at least to remove, I think, also the stench of corruption that was creeping very close uh, to his, you know, to, to, to state house in any long way. I would imagine he has a lot of unhappy ex-ministers. Is there likely to be pushback over his move? Uh, we wait and see. I mean, he, he, you know, in the in the announcement yesterday, he said you would appoint a fresh cabinet uh, in two days' time. What he made very clear is that there was one cabinet minister, former cabinet minister rather, who was also recently, uh, you know, taken into court. For, uh, for, for, for corruption, I think for involvement in corruption, and this is the former Minister of Lands. So in the speech yesterday, Chakwera made it very clear that he, uh, that the former minister would not have a seat in the new administration. But uh, that gives the impression that quite a good number of the former ministers might be retained or assigned in new ministerial positions. But at least uh, this has really brought the president, I think, some breathing space uh, and, and indeed, as you rightly know, warn him, produce, I think, from among commentators in Malawi, that at least he's demonstrated a decisive action and a commitment to fight the scourge of corruption that seems to be, uh, you know, returning is very slowly to Malawi again. And, and how do you think the people of Malawi are digesting this? Are they feeling confident? Is this a man that they fully support, even though, as you say, he's taken a little bit of time to take this bold move? It is quite interesting because they are, the current accusations of corruption are, I think, involving uh, some prominent, prominent business people. And it is quite telling that he, the opposition in Malawi has remained very, very quiet in all this. And this gives the impression that he, the opposition also knows that they are just as implicated in the ongoing, I think, corruption investigations, if, more, if not more so than the current government. So it is really up to now civil society and civil society groups uh, to take action. So, yeah, I think, you know, you know it shows that he is, is in control and, he, and perhaps I think it will also, uh, you know, gain him some, uh, some of the support that he had, but was slowly and very gradually sipping away. But now 
uh, you know, that he, he's taken this move. Hopefully, I think it buys him some space. But Itakwera has always been known also to give a good speech. So I think what one, uh, one has to look for is now what further action is going to happen beyond this decision and whether, you know, he's going to let the Anti-Corruption Bureau, uh, you know, take any anyone, you know, whether in his government or from the opposition to task for their, you know, for being implicated in corruption. Thank you so much. That was Dr. Bonnie Dulani, political science lecturer at the University of Malawi. Astonishing story. Uh, the president of Malawi axing his entire cabinet over corruption. Well,